ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to the sula vineyards limited q1 fy25 earnings conference call as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during this conference please signal the operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchstone phone please note that this conference is being recorded I now hand the conference over to Ms. Runjun Jain from EYIR. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Darwin. We welcome you to Q1 FI25 Earnings Call of Sula Vineyard Limited. To take us through the results and to answer your questions, we have with us the top management from the company, represented by Mr. Rajiv Samant, Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Karan Basani, Chief Operating Officer, and Mr. Abhishek Kapoor, Chief Financial Officer. We will start with a brief overview from the management and then we will open the floor for Q&A. Before we begin, please note that numerous factors could cause actual results to differ from those in the forward-looking statement. New factors emerge from time to time and it's not possible for the management to predict all of them, including the extent to which any combination of the factors may impact the business or cause results to differ materially from those contained in any statement. Sula Vinyat also undertakes no obligation to update any statements to reflect developments that occur after the statement is made. With that, I hand over to Mr. Rajiv Samhit. Thanks, Runjun. Very good evening to all of you. Thank you for joining us today for our Q1 FY25 earnings conference call. I hope all of you have had the opportunity to go through our Q1 press release and earnings call presentation that we have put up on the exchanges. Coming now to our performance for the first quarter, I'm pleased to say that we continue to be steadfast on our growth journey, reporting our highest ever first quarter sales in Q1 FY25. Our net revenue for the quarter stood at approximately 130 crores, which is higher by approximately 10% as compared to the previous year. It's worth highlighting here that this performance has come in despite the significant external challenges we faced during the first quarter, including the national elections, due to which we saw some very heavy restrictions on the movement of Alcobev. Um, and further, there were also several dry days across the country during the elections, which has definitely had an impact um, on our performance. In fact, the uh, intensity of the restrictions this time around uh, was quite unprecedented. And unlike anything we've seen in the past, and that definitely impacted sales across categories and across the country. The rules in place put restrictions on the stocks at distributors, as well as retailer points, as well as on consumer purchases. This led to retailers destocking during the quarter. Having said that, uh, we do expect this uh, one-time event uh, to be now firmly behind us, and we expect to see this reverse in the coming months. Secondly, the scorching heat wave that we saw in our key markets has also had an adverse impact um, on us, on, on uh, wine demand, as well as on wine tourism. But moving on, there are a couple of really encouraging positive trends in the quarter that I would like to touch upon. First is that the joys of wine are really spreading across India beyond just the metros and large cities. So smaller markets like Nasik, Daman, Telangana, MP, UP, Haryana, Orissa, among others, have performed very strongly for us in Q1, recording very high growth. CSD also continues to see very robust growth and grew 50% in Q1. Now, this bodes really well for our future growth and our ambitions of establishing a strong pan-India footprint and taking wine really nationwide. Second, is the source collection, which has been a real standout in our elite and premium portfolio. It has been one of the most successful premium wine brand launches of the last decade, if not the most successful, and continues to be a very strong performer for us, recording a 20% plus growth in Q1. Moving on, I would like to briefly touch on uh, uh, an important strategic change that we have made to our sales and distribution model uh, in our route to market in our key state, number one uh, sales state of Maharashtra. 
given the very wide portfolio of wines that we have with 68 labels currently and to bring an enhanced focus in both our categories that is the elite and premium as well as the economy and popular we have decided to shift to a third party sales model for our economy and popular brands in maharashtra this strategy enables our own internal sales team to focus uh, much sharper on the elite and premium categories uh, moreover i'm pleased to say that this initiative of moving to a third party sales model for our cheaper brands in maharashtra has shown promising early results we've seen healthy growth in the economy and popular category in q1 in fact we had already earlier adopted this approach in karnataka and telangana and it had yielded good results there as well so we are confident of this approach working well in maharashtra as well coming now to a quick update on our wine tourism business q1 was soft primarily because of heat wave deterioration of road infrastructure in the last few months um and also uh, due to the national elections there was definitely an impact even on that um especially the mumbai nasik route has faced infrastructure issues over the last few months and these unfortunately still continue while the footfalls have continued to remain soft there's a silver lining as we are seeing resort occupancies going up nicely in july and august compared to q1 further we hope that with the completion of the last stretch of the samruddhi mahamarg and with the repair work that's going on in full swing travel conditions should improve soon so we are optimistic about seeing a pick up before and during the upcoming festive period uh this has this has impacted us because uh, you would be aware that we sell almost exclusively our elite and premium wines uh in our wine tourism business and so when we have an impact on wine tourism it has a disproportionate impact on our elite and premium wines uh where the um if you talk about our elite wines um it has a much higher proportion of sale d2c at our wine tourism than any other category moving on as i have highlighted in the past our wine tourism business acts as a springboard for us in attracting new customers and in introducing many indians to wine for the first time so this is a very good platform for us to attract long term sula patrons and we are always on the lookout to expand this business to newer locations so in the previous quarter we launched milestone cellars by sula near the nasik airport this is our first tasting room and wine themed restaurant outside outside the sula campus and in the immediate future as well we have a couple of really exciting projects lined up to open in q2 first is the tasting room and wine themed restaurant planned at the newly acquired nd wines in nasik and second is the expansion of our wine tourism facilities at our domain sula campus near bangalore both these projects are progressing well and our target is to open these before the festive period begins so we expect these expansions to add further impetus impetus to our h2 performance especially in the wine tourism sphere little bit further out we also have our new resort coming up next year next to our york winery in nasik this is going to expand our room capacity by 30% as well as add uh, all important conference facilities which we are right now lacking in our existing resorts we will continue to look at expansion opportunities as well as strategic m&a opportunities to scale this business faster because we see it as a very key part of growing of our continued long term growth finally moving on to the outlook with the transitory headwinds now hopefully behind us the expansion plans in wine tourism coming on stream in h2 we're confident of ending the year on a stronger footing with that i would now like to call on our cfo abhishek kapoor to take you through our financial performance and metrics in greater detail over to you abhishek thank you rajiv good evening everyone following rajiv's overview of our business performance and key initiatives i will now focus on our financial highlights for q1 of fiscal 25 to start 
our operating revenue for Q1 showed a 10% YOY increase with 12.7% growth coming from our own brands. This includes unwinding of fair value of WIPS incentive amounting to INR 10 crore. Unwinding of this is an operating income as the original recognition was fair valued due to expected realizations extending beyond 12 months. The change in fair value assumption as also confirmed by our auditors is due to realization of past due till FY23 leaving a balance of less than 12 months old outstanding. Hence it is classified as an operating income. Our elite and premium portfolio grew by 8.6% and economy and popular by 24%. It is for the first time in last at least eight quarters that our economy and popular portfolio has grown ahead of elite and premium. Contribution from elite and premium touched 75% of our portfolio at its peak in FY24 and it's taken a pause during Q1. Having said that, our focus on premiumization shall continue. With separation of route to market for Maharashtra, which Rajiv mentioned in his speech, we see fair growth for both our elite and premium and economy and popular portfolios going forward. Our wine tourism business declined marginally by 2% compared to the same period last year. The reasons have already been mentioned by Rajiv. As Rajiv mentioned, Q1 was soft primarily because of the scorching heat wave and deterioration in infrastructure at present. Having said that, with the weather conditions improving and the conditions of roads also expected to improve, we are optimistic of seeing an uptick in footfall in the period ahead. Turning to the financial metrics now, our gross margin stood at 76%, which is 250 points better versus last year. Increase in employee costs by 10.5% includes a 6% increase on account of ESOP costs, which was granted in quarter four of FY24. Our expenses increased by around 18% primarily due to other two factors. Selling and distribution costs increase reflects the market mix change with markets outside of our core markets of Maharashtra and Karnataka growing ahead of uh, uh, growing uh, other markets growing ahead of these two markets. We saw a 500 basis point increase in contribution from other markets. This is in line with our strategy of investing in building the brand and distribution strength outside of our core markets of Maharashtra and Karnataka. Secondly, operationalization of bottling operations at ND Wines also contributed to an increase in OPEX. Our bottling operations commenced in July 2024. Our quarter one EBITDA increased by 10% to 35 crore, up from 34 to 32 crore in the same period last year. EBITDA margin held at 27%. Interest cost increase due to a one-time custodian fee on change of mortgage charge and there also a higher utilization of working capital limits in quarter one. Our Q1 is heavy on working capital on account of payment towards the grip procurement with higher weightage of cash inflows in quarter three and quarter four. Having said that, our debt EBITDA stood at 1.6 times, continuing to be well below our own benchmark of two. Our outstanding with balance as of 31st March 24 was 73 crore with INR 21 crore accrued during quarter one of FI 25 taking the total WIPs balance to 94 crore as of June end. Would like to remind here that at its peak the WIPs outstanding was 160 crore and then we received 89 crore from Maharashtra government on 31st of March. We further received 10 crore in July 2024, reducing the fifth this outstanding balance to 84 crore. We remain positive to realize the balance amount in FY25. Our profit after tax for the quarter totaled 14 and a half crore, reflecting a 7% increase over previous year. I would now request our CEO, Mr. Karan Vasani, to give you more insights into the operating initiatives. Over to you, Karan. Thank you, Abhishek, and thank you, Rajiv. Uh, good evening everyone. I will be taking you through some key operational updates. Uh, first off, happy to report that the monsoon is on track and we are expecting a healthy 2025 grape harvest, which we expect to meet our requirements and ensure that we have adequate supply of all our wine in the next financial year. 
We expect this to be our fifth consecutive harvest of good quality and quantity. The quality of our wines continues to be best in class and we continue to gain further international recognition for our wines. Most recently, we won a whole host of medals at both the Decanter World Wine Awards and the Asian Sparkling Wine Masters, confirming our quality. Our plan, moving on, our plan to have multiple bottling units in Maharashtra is on track and I am pleased to report that as of today, we are bottling and dispatching wines from three units in Maharashtra. Dispatches from York Winery, which is our subsidiary Artisan Spirits, began in the middle of May. At the newly acquired ND Wines, we have put in place bottling infrastructure on a war footing and dispatches have commenced in late July. Dispatches from both these units have commenced as per our planned timelines and we are on track to ma maximize the VIP subsidy available to us. Our key CapEx project for the year, that is phase one of our low cost seller for our cheaper wines at the DD unit is on track and will be delivered well in time for the 2025 grape harvest. This low cost seller is being built at a much lower capital cost of rupees 80 per liter as against our earlier premium sellers that were built at 120 rupees per liter. The total capacity of the low cost seller is 2.5 million liters and of that 1.5 million liters will be delivered in the first phase which will be ready by about January 2025. That concludes our operational updates and I would now like to hand the call back over to the moderator to open up for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchtone telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to please use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question comes from the line of Percy from IIFL. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, I just had a question on the uh, VIPs. So including the 10 crore uh, uh, of the adjustment booked uh, this quarter, and the normal income also booked this quarter. Uh, how do we see the overall uh, uh, whips for this year, not in cash flow terms, but in terms of PNL booking? Uh, thanks for your question, uh, Percy. So uh, this is Abhishek. I'll answer your question. Uh, so in terms of the whips, uh, we had shared earlier as well that there will be a, a slightly uh, lower uh, accrual during the year given that uh, the capping which has been introduced effective uh, this current financial year uh, we said that it will be closer to 80 uh, percent of uh, the uh, overall realizable value what we can achieve but with this 10 crore uh, it will it is expected to be almost at the same level as last year. Uh, sorry how much was that if you can just jog my memory? So last year we approved 48 crore uh, widths in financial year 24. Okay, and it will be similar this year? Yes, it, will, it is expected to be similar. Okay, and going ahead, uh, should we be taking like a normal 10-15% growth on this number or how does it work? So there one thing to remember, uh, per se the current year, one thing to add is that this year of the eligible widths we are only about to capture 80 to 85 percent given that bottling has begun in mid-May at ASPL and in July at ND. So from next financial year we'll be bottling throughout the year. So next year we expect instead of around 80, 80 to 85 percent to capture closer to 95 percent. So there will be a bit of a jump next year following which it will stabilize and grow at the pace of Maharashtra sales. 
Okay, got it. Uh, second question is, how do I look at your EBITDA for this quarter? So your reported uh, EBITDA, excluding uh, uh, other uh, financial income, is about uh, 34 crores. Uh, now, if this would include the 10 crores of the WIPS adjustment, uh, which is not pertaining to this quarter, but uh, adjustment over the last uh, few quarters, so a one-off in that sense. So if I remove that, the EBITDA will be 24 crores, which in margin terms would be about 21-22% uh, approximately, which is significantly lower than what we have done in any of the quarters in the past. So is this understanding correct, first of all? And secondly, if that is the case, what is the reason for these low margins? Yeah, Percy. So yes, you are right in terms of uh, the interpretation of the numbers. So it will be close to around 24 crore, uh, backing off uh, the 10 crore uh, one-time whips uh, unwinding impact. Uh, so this uh, EBITDA being lower versus uh, last year is uh, largely on account of uh, change in the mix. So our elite and premium portfolio always used to be higher uh, as uh, we have uh, been focusing on our premiumization. This year we have seen 270 basis points for the quarter. Uh, the, there is a skid in our elite and uh, premium share uh, in terms of the revenue share. Uh, so uh, largely due to that reason and also slightly higher SND which can see in the SND line item which I spoke about. Uh, largely these two factors contributed to the uh, EBITDA uh, being lower. In addition to that also our hospitality as Rajiv mentioned earlier where uh, you know our elite uh, wines are uh, uh, you know having the biggest share in terms of uh, the bottles which we sell from there. So these factors have contributed to the EBITDA uh, being lower versus uh, Q1 of last year. Understood. And uh, last question from my side, this third party model, exactly how does this work? Is there like one uh, person whom you sell the entire uh, wine to in Maharashtra and then he in turn appoints distributors and gets it done? Or do you have like multiple third parties uh, whom you deal with? Some more color on this would help. So I'll take this one. Uh, we are going to be dealing with one uh, third party. Uh, sort of acting like a super distributor who will then appoint his own distributors. Uh, this is a party well known to us who knows the market uh, extremely well. Uh, this is not a traditional model in Maharashtra. It's a very traditional model in cooperation states, Karnataka slash Telangana, uh, where you call it the, the promoter model. So we are sort of using that promoter model um, and using it in Maharashtra. And the uh, initial results have been uh, excellent. It, it, basically, we expand our distribution at the same point. So, w whereas earlier we were dealing with one distributor for all our wines, now that party is uh, appointing their own distributors. In some cases, they coincide, but what's happening is our distribution is also expanding, and each distributor in the market always brings their unique strengths and relationships. So, that is already starting to pay off uh, very handsomely in the first uh, two and a half months, uh, three months actually, since we have launch this strategy and it's a, a good uh, also part of the reason why the popular and economy has outperformed in Q1. Right, right. Got it. That's all from me. Thanks and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Madhur Rati from Counter Cyclical Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir. So I wanted to no, sorry to interrupt, but the line for you is very low in volume and sounding slightly muffled. Sure. Uh, is it better right now? Slightly sir. better, sir. Please go ahead. Yes. Sir, I wanted to understand that uh, excluding the VI, WIP uh, uh, benefits that we get, sir, there has been no value growth or else value, so very little value growth and uh, volume degrowth for this quarter, even on a such a small use. Sir, so why is that? Because as you understood that the segment was growing, so being an industry leader, so it's not getting reflected in our numbers. So if you could just explain me regarding that. So sure, I'll take this. Uh, the Q1 has been a perfect storm in a lot of ways. So this is not about uh, us uh, losing market share. The, the uh, entire wine industry has, uh, it's been a very slow quarter. Uh, because of the fact that you have the national elections this is, I can't, uh, you know, overemphasize how 
how uh, big an issue this was. Uh, unprecedented and we feel slightly overbearing restrictions and rules, uh, which, you know, given the fact that it's a smaller quarter in terms of sales, it has a disproportionate impact. That is one thing. Another thing which I um, didn't allude to earlier was that there was a very specific incident that happened a few months back in Pune. You know, you can refer to it as the Pune Porsche incident. Now, you all will be aware that a large part of our uh, sales and especially our elite and premium sales happen in Maharashtra. What has happened as a result of that incident was a large number of uh, bars and restaurants were closed literally overnight, not just in Pune, but also in Mumbai. And these are our two most important markets. And that has hit us. We are hoping that those will be, they're already starting to reopen. Um, it was, again, the response was, you know, whether that was the right response or not by the state authorities, uh, you know, it, it has really hurt the F&B business and it has hurt us as well. So we are looking forward to that reopening. That is another factor. And wine tourism, we did take a hit in Q1, you know, after many quarters of unbridled go growth. Uh, finally, in Q1, it softened. And, you know, we lay that at the doorstep of not just the elections and even those people who came to our campus where you have people normally who will load up their car dickies you know people were very worried about the checking etc and so everyone was limiting themselves to no more than sort of two bottles a person you had a you had a, a big impact of that you definitely had an impact of the heat wave nasix or some very hot conditions of course that is something that we are unfortunately going to have to deal with uh, every year uh, moving forward. So we had a perfect storm of a number of these conditions in Q1, which we certainly hope will be now uh, start to be behind us. And we are already starting to see that uptick from July onwards. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you, sir. That makes sense. Uh, sir, my next question would be, sir, what, what percentage of our revenue would come from Pareka segment and the pure play uh, general trade segment? Uh, Hello. Yeah. So, uh, so basically, our uh, on trade, the horeca, which we call as our on trade, that contributes to around thirty percent, and seventy percent comes from our off trade. Okay. So the off trade would be distribution and general trade, right? Yes, that's right. Okay. And so, just a final question, sir. What would be the outlook for FY twenty five in terms of our revenue as well as margins? Uh, a broad guidance would work. Uh, okay, Madhur. So while we don't uh, give any uh, outlook guidance uh, per se, uh, we remain, we continue to remain positive about uh, the balance of the year. As Rajiv has already spoken about, you know, the storm of uh, multiple adverse events is now behind us. Uh, so we are hoping for a, uh, you know, a positive recovery in the balance of the year. So then we expect the double digit kind of volume growth. Uh, on the volume front, I think you would have a better idea. So can you expect a double-digit volume growth for the whole year? So as I said, Madhur, uh, definitely can't uh, give any uh, guidance in terms of the specific numbers. Uh, I think uh, the indication which we have already given is in terms of a better recovery from uh, what we have seen in quarter one. Sure, sir. Thank you so much and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Himanshu Shah from Dolat Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, sir, you are audible. You may proceed, sir. Yeah, thank you. Uh, sir, just wanted your comment. One of our competitor, Pernu, has sold off their wine business in a couple of countries, including India. How do you see this movement? Should this benefit us positively, negatively? Uh, I, we believe uh, presumably Perno must have been pushing their wine business along with their uh, mother brands and the core whiskey business. So, yes, can the competition yet soften or something for us? Yes, uh, this is a great question. And uh, I would say that if this sale goes through, as has been, um, as we have uh, seen in the media, they're expecting it to close. Uh, sometime in late 2025, this is excellent news for us. Um, I can't even overstate how, how good news this is. 
Uh, however, having said that, I would be cautiously optimistic because these these kinds of things you you can't depend on them. There's a, a deal has been announced, but there's a you know many a slip between the cup and the lip, no pun intended. So Perno uh, Jacobs Creek is basically number two uh, to uh, to the best of our uh, knowledge in terms of sales in India after Sula. Uh, so, you know, obviously, uh, uh, extremely important competitor. And the fact is, as you have mentioned, that they have been riding on the success of their whiskeys. You know, I mean, Perno Ricard India is a giant a behemoth um, with massive muscle in the Indian market. And, um, and they basically, there have been all sorts of, you know, incentives to pick up the wine um, at a, you know, what works out to a heavily incentivized rate along with the whiskey. So, hey, you want the whiskey, you need to pick up the wine as well. And that is something that, you know, has been, has been extremely, uh, it, it is extremely difficult to, to compete with that kind of muscle. So with, uh, with Jacob's Creek moving on, hopefully, we are, we are very hopeful that this deal gets con completed, but we are not going to depend on it. To, uh, to a pure wine company, which is the, likely to be the case, Accolade in this case, uh, you know, they lose their entire clout in India. Uh, you know, for Accolade, the UK is a, is a far more important market, and they're also uh, bulking up to, take, to go back into China, which stopped, uh, dropped out of the, uh, you know, sort of the Australian radar for a couple of years with the massive tariffs which have been taken off. India is just not on Accolade's radar. Now, having said that, maybe they could work something out Maybe they could do a co-distribution with Perno. That's all possible. But Prima Facie, excellent news for us, I would say, mid to long term, with caution. Sure, sir. Thanks a lot for the detailed answer. Very helpful. Uh, that's it from my side, and all the best for it. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Giriraj Daga from Visaria Family Trust. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Am I audible? Uh, sir, you are audible. You may proceed. Yeah. yeah. So my, actually, I'm new to the company. Uh, my first, I need some clarification on the web, sir. So you mentioned you have accounted for 10 crore in the quarter one. Uh, was there a subsequent uh, corresponding number for the quarter one last year? Or if no, where did you accounted this 48 crore last year in which quarter? Uh, so, okay, uh, I'll take this uh, question, Giriraj. Uh, so, WIPs, as we uh, stated, uh, that uh, we had been uh, fair valuing the WIPs. So, the accrual uh, which happened as we uh, did our uh, primary sales from the company, uh, along with that, uh, basis the two years of discounting, we were fair valuing it uh, in our books. Now, uh, this unwinding has happened with respect to uh, the whole clarity coming onto the scheme, the continuity of the scheme, and also getting the regular payments from the government. So uh, that's where basically this stands from a comparative standpoint. And as I answered earlier to another question, uh, in terms of what is our expected uh, WIPs uh, for the year, uh, we are expecting it to be at the similar level as uh, we uh, accrued the uh, WIPs amount in the last uh, financial year. Hope no, this, uh, no, 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 sorry, I, I, I'm still missing the pace. So I, last year I can see in the balance sheet we have we are given 47.06 crore government grant accrued during the year. I am particularly looking which line item we have accounted this and in which quarter. So it was there in each of the quarters. All the quarters, depending on uh, the sale uh, done during the quarter, the amount was accrued into the operating income. So it's uh, when you look at the revenue line item, the operating revenue, uh, yeah. this is a part of that. Uh, so what was the corresponding number last quarter, quarter one? So last year, the, the number was close to around uh, 10 crore. Um, so actually, I got a bit confused when other people were making comparison that there is no growth except the excluding the weight. But uh, the number is same, right? So we still grown 10%, yes. right? Yeah, this is unwinding. So we have specifically called out the one time unwinding amount is 10 crore. So in addition to the base amount of 10 crore, there is an additional 10 crore on account of unwinding. Understood, understood. My second question is, uh, like, if you just need some clarification, we just briefly mentioned that. 
when i was looking at past financial during 18 19 20 we used to have a high uh, material cost but over the last 3 years that number has come down uh, so that is one aspect what happened there and second when i look at number from 19 to 24 standard number we have barely grown by 10% so if you can just highlight these two points so gilraj if you are comparing uh, with the previous years uh, which is spanning from uh, last 3 uh, to 4 years so if there is a major change in terms of our portfolio which has happened we have been talking about premiumization so led by this premiumization uh, of course uh, the growth has been higher uh, we spoke about that our at its peak uh, in fy24 we had uh, uh, reached our elite and premium to 75% uh, so that's basically the reason in terms of uh, where you see uh, the uh, the gross margin and where you are talking about the cost of material Uh, has been uh, gross margin has been increasing increasing and correspondingly you have seen uh, the cost of uh, goods uh, producing uh, over these years okay and growth part like uh, we have not grown for last like 5 years comparison 19 to 24 i think there uh, just to jump in you need to take a look and we can send this data to you is the mix change there was a huge uh, relatively large third party brands that we used to do which was importing and distribution of uh, wines and spirits from across the globe and that business has reduced substantially in fact i would say it's fallen by 70 plus percent uh, and we have focused really focused on our own brands which are far more profitable so if you were to look at just the own brand side of things you would see the growth and so thanks a lot thanks a lot let's all from my side sure thank you the next question is from the line of prakash modi from kct financial and management services please go ahead thank you am i audible yes please yeah so i have couple of questions one was that i have seen over the period there is some selling from the promoter side so any specific reason for that if you see last one year there is a reduction in the stake by almost 1.5% see jets uh, i'll say something here i'm not uh, usually I, i wouldn't comment comment on this but you know i do get this question a lot so let me make something very clear that uh, in fact if you take a look at what was my holding couple years ago and what is my holding today uh, perhaps my holding has reduced from say 27 to 25% so if you think about it in that terms this is not a big uh, reduction i hardly sold anything at ofs um, and you know i'm going to give you a little personal story here that i had to basically sell my house um, my residence to in order to finance my conversion of my warrants and esops into shares at that time and so for the last uh, two and a half years my friends i have not owned a residence so finally i decided that i think for a person in my uh, position i should own a residence uh, now that i am you know married and have a kid so i decided to buy a residence and you know those don't come for free and so i did need a little bit of liquidity for that and uh, you know i hope that that should be the end of the questions and the story i continue to be by far the largest shareholder and i hope all of you will appreciate the reason why i had to take a small amount of liquidity thank you yeah congratulations for your new house sir we hope for the best and uh, just my second question was in the last conquer you highlighted something of acquisition outside wine business so any updates over there or uh, no update on that we did, we have been taking a look but i must say that uh, nothing has come up that looks too exciting in fact at this point we are examining more closely one or two op- opportunities again within the wine business in india which look more interesting than anything that we are looking at outside the wine business so we did mention i did mention that we are open to it but uh, i would state explicitly at this point that there is nothing uh, nothing on the anvil nothing has come up that is very interesting we also received i must say a lot of feedback and a lot of warnings from a lot of quarters saying please stay away from spirits stay away from beer please continue to uh, focus on wine in fact i don't think we got a single positive comment or to this comment of mine that we were starting to look uh, 
a little bit uh, outside as well. So we also do take some of these things on board. At this point, nothing to report on that front. And just one last question to Mr. Kapoor that on the uh, revenue side, there is one item related to others, other income, so revenue from other sources. So can you just highlight that exactly? That is? So Prakash, this is largely interest income. So we also have uh, whatever surplus uh, which we accrue, we also park it into uh, banks and FDs. So there is an interest accrual on that. It's largely on account of that. Okay. okay. Thank you. That's it from my side. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Janita Sangvi from Stock Lounge. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, I wanted to know the conversion rate from wine tourism. Like how many customers are you all retaining from that section? Uh, that That is a, a bit vague. Sorry. Uh, you know, retaining... Do you mean how many people oh, how many who come to yes. our campus actually buy something? Yes. If if that's your question, so it's a very high proportion. You should note that we charge an entry fee because uh, uh, years ago we noticed that people were just coming and having sort of picnic in our vineyards and all that and not really paying anything. So we we now charge a thousand rupees on the weekend uh, per person to enter, and six hundred rupees on a weekday per person. Uh, people come and pay happily, and then that entire amount is redeemable against purchases, against wine or food. Um, so, you know, everyone has to, of course, buy at least that. But in general, we find mo mo most people are, are buying even more than that. So there's not a, I would say that there's almost not a single person who enters our vineyards who, who doesn't uh, buy something or the other. And once you start talking about our higher level um, you know, sort of visitors who are staying at the source, etc. You know, paying upwards of ten thousand rupees a night, then the the purchase uh, really goes up. So almost everyone buys wine to take away. Okay, uh, I do have one more question as well. Uh, what is the current capacity utilization, sir? So I will take uh, this one as of. The previously concluded harvest, Harvest 24, we stood at about 85 to 86 percent capacity utilization, uh, which is pretty close to our maximum, which we judge at around 87, 88 percent. Okay. Uh, okay, sir. All right. Uh, so, uh, y'all have been at this uh, maximum utilization uh, since this is the first year, or has been uh, the previous years as well? So so we are always in the process of incrementally adding capacity and as I alluded to in my opening remarks, we are this year also adding a little bit more capacity. We're adding 1.5 million liters of capacity, which represents about a 9% increase in our capacity, which will put us in a good spot for the upcoming 2025 grape harvest. Okay, so thank you. Add, uh, I'm going to add uh, one, uh, one comment here. I'm not sure if we touched on it earlier that we did uh, a lot of work on uh, figuring out how to build a, a low-cost seller for our cheaper wines. Earlier, our cost per liter, taking into consideration uh, civil construction as well as the storage tanks, as well as uh, you know cooling infrastructure, etc., was coming to 120 rupees a liter. And I'm very pleased to say our team, led by Karan, have, have done some great work on this. And the new capacity that we are putting in is more like 80 rupees a liter. So significantly less, which is definitely going to have a, a great uh, positive impact on our OC going forward and will allow us to put more money into, um, you know, into competing in the market. Okay, so thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Arshay Desai from Archer Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, am I audible? Uh, yes, you are audible, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So, as mentioned in the opening remarks, sir, uh, this quarter growth was impacted due to the CTPO and uh, election. However, the growth in economy and uh, popular has uh, gone strongly, in fact, outspacing light and premium. So, what is the reason for the same? Going forward, due to this strain of the economy and popular to outgrow, a light and premium to continue? See, I had uh, alluded to uh, a, a big change that we have made in our uh, distribution in Maharashtra, number one market 
um, where we did feel that our focus was getting diluted over the last year as we've been adding more and more wines, especially in the elite segment. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, today we have 68 wine brands. That is about something like 50 of our own brands and about 15, uh, 18 uh, imported brands. So it's a huge portfolio when, you, um, when you're talking about just wine. So just doing this sharpening of focus, hiving off this um, portfolio to a third party has already started to pay very strong results. And the results are, the, is, are coming first in the sort of the popular and economy category. However, having said that, uh, no, there's nothing that says that, you know, moving forward, that is going to continue to be. We, we uh, expect to get back to, uh, uh, you know, something closer to where we were uh, earlier. Having said that, we reached a high point of 75% of our sales of our revenues and own branch coming from elite and premium. That was something where we never expected to reach. So getting to more than 75% is not going to be that easy. Uh, so, you know, I would just leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you. So much. That's from my own. Yeah. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will take that as our last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Rajiv Saman for closing comment. Over to you, sir. Yes, so just like to thank all of you for being on board this, this evening. Just to recap a few things, um, Q1 was challenging. However, we already see conditions starting to improve. National elections obviously were, uh, were a big challenge for us. Uh, heat wave, more recently, of course, we've had the, the problems with the Nasik Highway. Having said that, a lot of good things also on the horizon. Just started direct flights from Delhi to Nasik recently. Um, that's again one a good thing to, to look forward to. So Nasik and Shirdi flight connectivity getting better and better uh, all the time. In fact, I am slated to take my first flight from Hyderabad into Nasik in just a couple of days. Um, so, and so a lot of good reasons to be very positive and optimistic about the months and years ahead. I want to remind that this is a long-term game. It doesn't lend itself oh, so well to quarterly earnings, but nonetheless, we are positive about the way ahead. Thank you. On behalf of Sula Vineyards Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you all for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.